Hi, I'm Jeff Waters. In this presentation, I'll share some of the top tips and observations I've gathered over my 15 years in the CAE industry to help you get the most out of your FEA and CFD investments. So first, let's define some of the categories of CAE software out there. Uh, light CAE software tools are the teaser products, very low in functionality, that a lot of CAD companies were uh, embedding in their products and these tools don't have a whole lot of functionality they often don't get used and in general even if they're free I find that they're a bit of a waste of time so I tend to tell people not to bother with those next you have the super high-end expert level CAE tools uh, these tools have all kinds of capability but they do require a specialist to drive the tool uh, with a lot of training a lot of expertise and probably a masters or PhD level and finally, you have uh, what some people call upfront or casual CAE tools. These are uh, definitely more accessible to average engineers or let's say people that are less specialized. And they carry usually a lower price tag. Um, they may not have all the functionality and capability of the expert level tools, but uh, they do have enough to be useful as a first pass engineering tool. Now, I think most companies should have both casual or upfront and expert level CAE tools in their arsenal. There are uh, definitely reasons to have both and there should be a dual deployment. But deploying these two tools requires a real good understanding of the types of people that will use them in order to get the most out of these tools. So let's start with uh, your typical expert user. Most of these people have a master's or PhD level and have spent many years studying FEA and CFD and it's really what they do for a living and how they identify themselves. In academia, these people try to squeeze every ounce of accuracy they can out of their simulation work and to some degree they bring that with them when they come into industry. To get that level of accuracy and also just to sort of program their own solvers and uh, simulation codes, they have a very different threshold for what it means uh, to be an easy to use product. Expert level users are totally focused on CAE and really they think about it all the time. It is what they do for a living. So let's contrast that with a casual or upfront CAE user. These engineers juggle a huge variety of activities and responsibilities. For them, FEA or CFD is going to be just a tool, just one of many tools that they use to get their job done. And so it's really important to understand that the burden of, of ease of use and a product is critical for these individuals to adopt FEA or CFD. They are driven by a completely different set of parameters. Let's start with some of my top tips around getting the most from upfront or casual CAE. My number one tip above all is to get FEA or CFD milestones embedded in your standard product development process. If it's not on the Gantt chart, these engineers are typically not going to do it when the going gets tough. So get it on the Gantt chart. And oh, by the way, it needs to be on the far left side of your Gantt chart, not at the end of the development process. Now, a lot of companies invest in upfront CAE and think that the tool is just going to magically do its job. Now, training is probably one of the most critical parts to success here. It needs to happen on a pretty regular basis. I recommend uh, once a quarter at least twice a year. It needs to be scheduled, something that uh, people are expected to go to, not something that they can opt out of because they're off fighting fires. And most importantly, my top tip in training is get your vendor to tie the training to a real project. Uh, what this does is it makes it real for the people that are there. They learn how to use the product in a very real situation. And of course, at the end of the training, you also have some answers to problems that are on the table today. Uh, that's the best way to go about training. Customize the courses. This next idea is subtle, but I've seen it totally crush the return on investment for upfront CAE implementations. And that is... Uh, engineers will often look at this shiny new upfront CAE tool as a black box that should of course spit out the proper answer. And so they're looking for accuracy, they're looking for 
really inordinate amounts of accuracy. And if that's their goal, they're going to really spend way too much time trying to get to one perfect answer. And they'll end up using the CAE tool as a ver verification tool. It's important in the early deployment of CAE tools to instill this idea that engineers should be looking at trend data. So you really want to be looking at apples to apples comparisons on uh, simple to set up models over a range of design ideas. And so you're not looking for the absolute accuracy at each of those points. You're looking at the trend data how the design changes improve over time. This uh, takes a lot of the stress off of the tool and the engineer using the tool to get to that accurate answer will radically increase the number of design studies that the engineer can handle and also will take some of this pressure off of them to have a perfect answer. Uh, that need to have a perfect answer often is what makes an engineer stop using these upfront CAE tools. Uh, they'd rather go out and test something in the lab if that's the case. This next tip has to do with shifting upfront CAE earlier in the development process. Way too often companies have to wait until they have a pretty well detailed CAD model in place before they can do any of their CAE work. And if you're doing that, you're really defeating the purpose of attempting upfront CAE. The best way to address that problem is to implement this new style of geometric modeling uh, that's hit the market. It's sometimes called explicit modeling or history free modeling or direct modeling. And basically it allows an engineer to work more like uh, working with clay uh, on the screen instead of having to fully define a detailed design CAD model. And so it's a much more flexible early phase conceptual style of modeling. And I'll show an example of this in a tool called SpaceClaim, which is the company I currently work for. The tool is super simple to learn and use and fully compatible with all the major CAD tools that are out there. It's just a more appropriate type of tool to be using in the early stage so that you're not fighting the nature of a history-based CAD tool uh, for conceptual design. So let's get into some of my top tips for expert CAE users. Uh, the first tip, just like for casual users, is about milestones. It's a little different though. Expert users will typically turn a project into a research project that could last many years if left to their own devices. So it's really, really important to have a stopping point listed on your Gantt chart for them. Unlike casual users, there's no problem getting them started. This is what they do for a living. However, if you want your CAE activities to impact product that's going out the door and real projects and business, then there needs to be a stopping point. A uh, quick aside on another comparison between these two groups, uh, training is not nearly as critical for expert users as it is for casual users in terms of implementing properly CAE tools. One area that will have a big impact on your ROI is getting the expert CAE users involved in your project team meetings. Way too often, and this is a real shame, but way too often expert CAE users are sort of considered these uh, skunk workers. They're off in the corner by themselves working on deep R&D projects and they're really not involved at all in the development process on projects that are going out the door soon. And it, the degree to which you can start to include them in early project meetings you will now start to see these engineers become aware of the business that you're in, the cycles and time scales for getting products out the door, and you'll also have team members who start to rely on these expert users more than they would in the past. So I highly recommend that you pull these expert CAE users away from their computer screens, have them participate in project team meetings, and even get some of their work on the Gantt chart. Direct modeling can also be a huge asset for expert CAE users. The reason being, they typically have no CAD skill. They're not in front of a drafting uh, CAD program for 30, 40 hours a week. It's just not part of their job description and they'll never maintain uh, any level of CAD skill. 
For these users, one of the key things that they need to do is defeature and simplify models in order to get them prepared for their simulation tools. Otherwise, their meshers and solvers will just croak or choke. And a tool like Space Claim, again shown here, really makes quick work of that defeaturing and simplification process. And it's an easy tool that these analysts can learn to use themselves rather than going back and overburdening designers uh, to do that work for them. It's a great way to really break an inefficient loop in your process. So those are my top six tips for getting the most ROI from your CAE implementations. But I wanted to share a couple of final points here before we wrap up the presentation. If you're having trouble getting your team to use CAE effectively, you might need to turn to a series of sticks and carrots in order to affect change. For example, you might make a requirement that all reports coming out of engineering uh, around CAE need to include an estimated time savings over doing the same work if you didn't have CAE. And this helps uh, management folks as well as the engineers themselves and the project teams uh, better understand the value of CAE. And this next one uh, was offered up to me by a VP of engineering at a, a large lighting company a few years ago. He was having a really hard time getting people to stay out of the lab and go right to physical prototyping every time they wanted to try an idea. And so he theorized, wow, why don't I just make a rule that you can't use the, the lab, the test lab, unless you've shown that you've done some CAE or proven why CAE isn't appropriate. Now, that's a pretty hardcore thing to implement, but I would sure love to hear if it works for you. You may also want to take a more pleasant approach, and there's really two schools of thought on this. The first one I think is the most powerful. It's really giving credit to the engineers that are doing this work, that are saving tons of money for your company by adopting upfront and expert CAE technologies. And that can be done at company meetings simply by having uh, one of your executives present some work that's been done by an engineer, call out that engineer personally. It's a really, really powerful way to affect change. And the other one, I'm not sure really how to go about this, but there must be ways to incent people to actually use CAE tools. And I'd encourage you to check out both. If you found these tips useful, I also invite you to read my blog, lifeupfront.com. For about the last two and a half years, I have been collecting even more of these tips and best practices around CAE, and I look forward to your comments and participation there. You can also reach me anytime. I'm open for discussion.